Arguably one of the more sardonic chefs out there, Anthony Bourdain has established himself as a multifaceted and world-traveled aesthete, with a deep affection for food, community, and regional traditions. But he wasn't always known for being an intellectual silver fox who hobnobs with Obama, or for being cool enough to call Iggy Pop a personal friend. Here's the must-know dirt about America's favorite bad boy chef. Recovering Addict It's no secret that substance abuse runs rampant in the food service industry. Bourdain developed a serious problem with drugs while working in kitchens many years ago. Most significantly, he developed a heroin addiction, which he managed to kick in the 80s. I wanted to become a heroin addict. I was very proud of myself when I first shot up. I was a vulnerable, goofy, awkward guy whose only success socially was to be the baddest guy in the room. He also smoked crack cocaine. On a Reddit AMA, he wrote that he found himself combing the shag carpet for paint chips in the hope that they were falling crack bits, and smoking them anyway. He quit that too. But unlike many addicts who give up any and all substances when they get clean, Bourdain still drinks alcohol. He knows he's unusual and writes, most people who kick heroin and cocaine have to give up on everything. Maybe because my experiences were so awful in the end, I've never been tempted to relapse. But you'll never find Bourdain knocking one back at home. He told Men's Journal, I don't ever drink in my house. When I indulge, I indulge. But I don't let it bleed over into the rest of my life. Rebellious Taste Bourdain came from relatively humble origins in New Jersey, where he was raised on standard American cuisine. But he was intrigued by the smells that would drift upstairs when the adults were hosting dinner parties downstairs. And when his family traveled abroad, his curiosity only grew. He told The Guardian that he responded to being left out of adult dinners by his parents with a culinary rebellion of sorts, recalling, I reacted by requesting oysters and dishes they found repulsive and becoming increasingly adventurous in my taste. It wasn't about the food, but about getting a reaction. And he hasn't stopped. But for a man who's traveled the world eating everything, he told Conan that even he has limits. I, I've eaten a lot of really nasty things on my show, but nothing as soul-destroying as my airport Johnny Rockets experience. Paying his dues. How did I get from, you know, dunking breaded clams in hot grease to where I am today? If I know. Bourdain cut his teeth in the restaurant business as a dishwasher, and he actually liked the job. At the time, he was a self-professed awkward teenager, and as he told The Guardian, this job made total objective sense to him. The ability to perform the job well, accomplishing any task given to him within the job description, allowed him to flourish under the tutelage of people he respected and admired. He told Fresh Air, I was a happy dishwasher. I jokingly say that I learned every important lesson, uh, uh, all the most important lessons of my life as a dishwasher. A fateful trip. Bourdain did do a bit of traveling before he became a famous globetrotting chef. So what was it that made him want to do more in life and see more of the world? First time I came here, it was just like taking acid for the first time. Bourdain told Men's Journal that a trip to Japan, shortly before Kitchen Confidential was published, completely changed his life. He said, It showed me there was so much more in the world than I had any idea about. There was so much to learn and there was so much stuff out there. Serious about jujitsu. If you watch Parts Unknown, you're privy to the fact that Bourdain is in good shape. Apparently, they don't know what tapping out means here because I was tapping like Western <laughs> Union. I thought he was going to push that 71-year-old finger right into my brain pan. You'll even catch him in action as a serious practitioner of the martial arts, specifically Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He told Nuvo, I train every day wherever I am in the world. When I'm in New York, I train at the Renzo Gracie Academy, an hour private, and then an hour and a half general population. That's basically Fight Club. It's a humbling, uh, humbling experience getting just squashed by younger, more fit, more experienced people. Uh. Late Bloomer It's hard to look at Bourdain and imagine him struggling to pay his bills, but he spent years busting his hump in the kitchen, worrying if he'd be able to get by. He told Biography that at age 44, he was standing in kitchens, not knowing what it was like to go to sleep without being in mortal terror. I was in horrible, endless, irrevocable debt. I had no health insurance, I didn't pay my taxes, I couldn't pay my rent. But things changed for Bourdain when his first book, Kitchen Confidential, was published, catapulting him out of the world of kitchen obscurity and into the world of celebrity. The book, which was credited with revolutionizing the entire genre of food writing, was so well-received that he no longer had to slave in a kitchen for 12 or more hours every day, he told Fresh Air. When the book came out, it very quickly uh, transformed my life. I mean, changed everything. Unlikely Advocate As a rule, Bourdain says he isn't prone to advocacy, but when it comes to food waste, he's throwing his full weight into raising awareness about it. In the United States, 40% of the food we produce is going to waste. That alarming statistic was the impetus that inspired Bourdain to join the team behind the documentary Wasted as an executive producer. As a young cook, I came up in an old school system, use everything, waste 
nothing. But it's not the only trending topic he's passionate about. Bourdain's girlfriend, Aja Argento, is among the many women who have said they were assaulted by Harvey Weinstein. And Bourdain says that has brought the issue home for him. He told Slate he's doing some soul-searching, asking himself, Why was I not the sort of person people would see as a natural ally here? I started looking at that. Mending Fences there are a few choice things Bourdain is known for, and feuding with other celebrity chefs is one of them. He's thrown down on everyone from Bobby Flay to Rachel Ray, leveling his peers with colorful and profane barbs. But in recent years, it seems that Bourdain may be spending less time trash-talking and more time focusing on his work. Some of his more recent insults toward Guy Fieri are tamer than those in the past, and he's been mum about Paula Deen for some years now, which is a huge change in tack from his previous critiques of her. This is not Southern food she's been selling. This is her brand has been for all those years novelty food. Cheeseburgers between, you know, Krispy Kreme donuts here. He even headlined the Cayman Cookout with Emeril Lagasse in January of 2017, showing that he's chilled in that regard, too. Maybe it's all that jujitsu and his world-weary, son-of-a-bitch, unstoppable lust for life. Thanks for watching. Click the mashed icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love, too.